Hey guys, welcome back to part 9 of the Power Wheels Jeep build. Today we are starting on remaking that gear shifter from the last video and then we're jumping on to electrical. Alrighty guys, check this out. So I've remade up that uh, gear shift lever, as in the last video when we test rode this thing, it was really difficult to change gears quickly. So I've opted for the foot uh, rest style. So you can just rest your foot on here and go up and down gears. And I've actually utilized the old steering arms that I made up, they were way too small. So I've used those, I have to use uh, two right hand threads there, but that's just uh, what we had to do. And as you saw, I did have to change this mount because the uh, heim joint down there wasn't going to work um, it was just going to collide with that mount so as you can see that worked out pretty well and we can change gears pretty quick in this thing now it is a little bit tight still it just has to wear in but it's actually it's nice nice whichever way you do it so it'll be a lot quicker to change gears now next thing we're going to move on to is uh, putting on an electrical sort of dash panel getting everything hooked up so we can have all of our switches hooked up properly and mounting up a new battery that I picked up. All right, so I finally picked up a brand new battery for this thing. Um, I got sick of jump starting it all the time. I do have a habit of picking up old batteries and never charging them sort of thing. So I picked up a brand new one. This is about $50, nice and cheap. Um, so I'm gonna mount it here in the location that we've always had the battery. And I do have to take into account that this rear um, swing arm does actually come forward. So I think we'll off, sort of offset it there and put two bits of angle iron on each side just so it can't move around. And I do have a nice uh, bungee cord that we'll put over the top just to hold it down. Um, now I would like this thing as low as possible and as centered of gravity as I can, but obviously being so small this thing, um, there's just no room. And if I could, I'd put it underneath the back seat, but that's just gonna add weight at the back and we do have a fuel tank to make up for that at some point. So I think just having it all here, nice and close to the engine itself and all the controls will be probably the best location for it.
Now, a smart person would have actually flipped these around and sat the battery in this section, put a bit of rubber in like I was planning on doing, but I completely forgot. So this will just have to do. All right guys, just gonna take a quick break to talk about today's video sponsor, Kang Industrial. These guys offer the highest quality tools at the lowest price as possible. Now they have hooked us up with a one inch um, TB3 metal tubing bender here. So I've gone for the one inch die at 240 degree radius. This thing is gonna be an absolute game changer. And I have been waiting on this to arrive to actually start back on our mower build. Um, Cause on the power wheels we had to use all preformed bends. So there's no need for that anymore with this. Now this thing is built really beefy. It's got a 15 mil thick plate at the top and 12 mil thick plates in the center. And the stand is absolutely awesome. I'll bolt this thing down and uh, get a nice spot for this thing. So if you guys want to go check out their website, I'll leave the link down in the description. Let's get back to it. So this is why we measure twice and cut once in this instance. Cut the wrong side. Anyway, I think we'll just hack it down here and just have two separate pieces. Um, and the windscreen will probably cover that anyway.
Alrighty guys, so we've got it all back together. Um, everything's now cooked up. We've got the uh, ignition there hooked up and our new start button, so that's all good. Now we'll uh, fuel this in one day with something and make it all look nice and neat, but for now we're just gonna leave it like that. And I haven't hooked up the headlights, so the front headlight switches or anything yet. Um, the plugs are in there too, and the rear lights as well, because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those yet because um, I want to actually get these original LEDs to work if I can possibly with this system put those on the front there or even just some driving lights or something just on there just for looks anyway um, now that windscreen I haven't fitted that back up either because last time the clutch lever just hits it and it gets in the way so we'll see how that goes um, I might have to trim that down a little bit in a future video anyway we'll see if this thing will fire up because last time it did the accelerator got stuck on and it ran in almost to a tree so we're just going to see how this goes and hopefully we can go for a little drive on this thing. Alrighty guys, so there you have it. That is actually the first proper test ride we've had without any issues, and this thing runs really good. Now that gear shifting works so much better than what we had before. It is slightly tight in the mechanism, but I think once it wears in, it'll be fine. Now, we'll be honest with you guys, I am kind of scared to ride this thing. It is just so unpredictable, and the power is just right there when you need it. And I don't know, I'm not used to this style of stuff. So I think we have to try and get used to it, but now this thing is completely finished, we can make up a fuel tank and then we can paint this thing finally. So I'm thinking red frame, uh, maybe some black wheels or red wheels, I'm not sure. So let me know down below what you guys reckon, the color scheme we should do on this thing. Now in the next video, we will be jumping back onto that uh, 50 horsepower mower build. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Thanks to Kang Industries again for that metal bender. Um, that's gonna make a whole heap of difference around the workshop. So make sure you guys smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in the next one.